amazing arc in the last four leading up to five seasons, and last, you, you almost kind of became a hunter in a way last season, trying to find Maggie, that you would stop at nothing to find. So how do you feel going into season five? Where's, where's Glenn at now that he's found Maggie? Does he still feel the same intensity, or do you think that's gonna kind of sedate him a little bit? They get more protective. Um, it's it's interesting to see where every character kind of lies on the spectrum, and I think for Glenn, he still has that within him to go to those really, um, uh, uh, I guess, places where you need to go to to survive. But for him, he's been validated with hope because he woke up in a prison with all of his loved ones gone, and he had a moment to himself and realized. F this, I'm gonna go find everybody, gathers everything and then treks out to go, and he found everybody. And so everything, uh, so everything was validated, and so from this point forward, I think for him, he's like, we can strive for hope, we can strive for humanity, because it worked out for me, even yeah. though they're in really, a really terrible situation at the end of last season. Well, you, I mean, I think Glenn embodies that part of us that hopes that if we were in love with someone, that we would go to those lengths, you know, that we would go to those lengths, and we would even take a swing at cutlets. Uh, who, yeah, uh, I mean, not the smartest moves, <laughs> but uh, you know, he let me, he let me punch him. <laughs> That's just because I wrote it that way. <laughs> Look, I don't know who that was for, but I guess everyone could take it. Okay, bye, everyone. I, I love, love you. you. Thank you. That was love so quick. Too. I love you. Who are you talking to? Hey, here's the man. I saw that. Uh, Miss Cohen, uh... I love you too. What else did this, what else did being, being reunited mean for Maggie, uh, with Glenn? Is it, do you feel, is this, are we now into, like, now let's find Beth mode, or what, what is... Who seems to be still out there somewhere? We're not sure. We don't know. She just disappeared. So where where do you think her head's at going into season five? I think that the amazing thing at the end of season four was that we actually found each other, and there were points in there where it seemed almost deluded that you find your husband and then find the rest of your group. And we saw that when Maggie talks to Sasha and Bob, like I'm going. It might seem crazy, but I'm going anyway. And when she actually finds him, I think it gives such a sense of strength to her that everything else is possible. They leave the prison after losing Herschel and it's just so, it's so important I think for, for anyone in this group to keep finding an actionable task and at that moment it was like I'm finding my husband and that's what I'm gonna do and it's gonna work and it did and uh, so now it's moving that on to finding her sister and to just sort of keeping everyone fortified, you know, it's. We either choose to be hopeful and to carry on, or not to, so it, it doesn't feel, you know, I'd rather choose the former. <laughs> so, yes. But I even, thought, I even thought the way that the show handled you guys reuniting is the way that it would have to be. Like, I feel, I feel like there was a moment where it could have been super schmaltzy and heavy-handed and like, Oh, you need the blah, 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 blah. And, yeah. But you barely have any time. It's like, oh my god, you're okay. Shit, we gotta go. You know, it's like there's no, there's just no time to really, you just kind of have to take it and then move on as quickly as possible. Yeah, I felt like he was a soldier coming back from war. Like, I felt like I don't even know if he's alive. And, oh, oh my god, he is. A, oh my god, he's right there. And it was, e you were equally, equally a soldier. Equally. You were equally a soldier. But it was, um, thanks, thank you. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it was funny because when we shot that um, scene, I remember actually running and it was very gravelly and I fell over on the way and I thought, that's real. <laughs> <laughs> no rock will stop. <laughs> the easiest guy to spot at Comic Con is Michael Cummings. <laughs> how, uh,. How do you feel since, I mean, we talked a little bit over the summer, you know, like you just kind of coming into the cast, coming into the show midway through, and you said you already immediately felt like you were just part of the group, you were part of the family. How are you feeling now? Do you feel like it's, can you remember a time when you weren't on the show anymore? First I want to ask, who, who was here last year? All I 
gotta say, Scott Gimble is not a stupid motherfucker. He is a smart motherfucker. Hey, you know, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, the whole experience has been fantastic. I mean, um, everybody up here and, and everyone still down in Atlanta um, have been extremely welcoming. Um, I, feel, I feel like at times I've been here from the beginning. I mean, it really is that warm of a creative environment, um, a safe environment, and, and that's very important to do the kind of work we do. I mean, it's everything, every single person on this stage, every character in this world has had massive, massive loss up until this point. So what we're dealing with from day to day is loss on top of loss. And to get to those places emotionally, you have to feel safe. And if you don't, it, it doesn't ring true. And uh, I was a fan of the show before I came on the show, and uh, I, I couldn't be more thrilled than the reception I got. And to witness the work I work, uh, to witness the work that I witness every day being done by everybody up here. How does a guy like Abraham keep his head? On? Like, how does he? Keep... Oh yeah, of course. How does he keep his? How does he keep his head on his shoulders and focus? Is it this idea of? We got this guy, he said there's a mission, we gotta go. Is, is he mission driven? Is that what keeps him going? Yeah, right now, it's, it's, it, it literally is saving the world. Yeah. Eugene, Eugene holds the cure to saving the world, and we have to get him to Washington. And, it, you know, the conflict. Not so sure about that. <laughs> what? You know what? You should just not get in my way, buddy. Hey! <laughs> this should turn into like WWE Raw, where you guys kick the table off. <laughs> Smite down, Rick versus Abraham. Uh, but is it? Uh, do you? What do you think Abraham's breaking point might be? Like, what do you think? Because at this point, he seems pretty level-headed. Like, he's one of the more level-headed people at this point. Really? I think so. <laughs> I don't want to go inside your head. Um, at this point, everybody has. Hope drives the show. I think that uh, breaking points for any of these characters is that point where hope seems at its smallest. Yeah. Um, and the minute you lose hope, that's a very dangerous world for everybody involved. Right. Uh, speaking of hope, uh, a character that we saw where hope started to spring inside her was uh, Michonne. <laughs> seems pretty, like, pretty badass, like, you know, pretty focused, pretty, and you're like, you don't even know, you don't know everything about her, there's all this stuff going on that you don't know yet, and you couldn't say, because you obviously couldn't give it away, but what a really, like, it's so wonderful to see, you know, like, her humanity, and really, uh, it was such a wonderful arc for her this past season, how did it feel for you to open up that way? It felt wonderful, it felt great, I mean, it was a lot to be this woman that she was in the beginning, and uh, have that type of a shield up, that type of armor on all the time. And uh, it, was, it was very interesting, because I like to connect with people. I think of myself as a relatively strong chick, but I was nothing like Michelle in terms of strength and, and uh, just her ferocity, really, you know? And so it was kind of like stepping into a very daunting position. And what I loved about her, though, was that from the beginning and right through what has now happened where you know the layers have opened up and she started to heal is that there's always been something that I, I just adore about this character and I have to hand it very directly to Mr. Kirkman and Mr. Gimple is that she's, she has a very unapologetic strength to her. And you see that in a lot of the women characters of the show, which is so exciting uh, to see. And, and it is something where that doesn't shift. Like, she has evolved and opened up and, and found a way to reconnect and, and found people that she truly can love. And that's something I think she always really wanted was to love again, but she was so scared to do it and she created such armor around opening her heart up again. But then being around these people and, and Carl and, and Rick and everybody, just, she couldn't. Oh, thank you. I love you too. 
You're very sweet. Um, but, you know, it allowed her to love again. And so I think that that um, was something where her strength hasn't shifted, though. That's what I found fascinating about still playing her, is that she's still unapolog unapologetically strong, but it's a different type of strength. It hasn't, it hasn't mellowed. It's just transitioned. And that's really a, a fascinating thing to get to play. Well, speaking of transition, uh, I mean... Are people shouting, look at the flowers at you all the time? <laughs> all the time now. <laughs> all the time. Even in the grocery store. <laughs> Don't look at the flowers. <laughs> but you're in the flower section when they yell. <laughs> How has this experience been for you bringing Carol to where she's gotten? I mean, she's... Carol is such an immense tower of strength. And, and really... A, a, a natural leader, it turns out, and you have portrayed her so beautifully. Uh, what is, what is, who is Carol to you, and what has her journey been to you? It's been uh, the time of my life. It's been something I'm so proud of for the character. It's been something I never saw coming. And if I keep going, I'll cry. <laughs> Changing on their family, they're they're not bullshitting you. I mean, they're basically in isolation out in the middle of Georgia, and they are what keep each other going. I think one of the reasons why the show feels so authentic and special is because your relationship. You can really feel the you can feel the legitimacy of the of your actual relationships bleeding through onto the show. So to see that passionate about Carol and being a part of the show, I, I just, I know that it really, it makes the fans feel like that the show is even that much more worth watching to see that come to life. Yeah. That it's amazing being able to work with all these wonderful people to be so vulnerable with each other, we like but it too. to be so vulnerable with the fans, because just the how you express yourself, you know how much you love it. Yeah. And it really does feel like If you want to, in an orderly, non-violent fashion, <laughs> step out there. All right. Uh, 